everyone, and welcome to the Dies Cast. I am Russell Song, and with me I have... Yeah. When last we left off, Aquans and Jonas had uh, been taking some downtime, which was interrupted by a series of events. <laughs> one of which was... Some of which were outside their plan, and one... Uh, but one in particular caught their attention. A potential assassination attempt towards the council members. Summoned to the council chambers, Aquins and Jonas were able to deduce that the f- letter, which was bore the seal of the Court of the Seven, was a forgery. Thinking that this letter was instead to intended to distract the authorities of Lyria from some other event going on, with already with Lyria's uh, defenses already diminished, they okay. decided to go out and investigate. Uh, additionally, Jonas managed to, to participate in an experiment to meld his his two rings of protection together into a new reforged ring. Yep. During the time period, though, this they also ran into Bree, the friend Bree Tealeaf again, who seemed to be up to her own mischievous ways during all this, all these events. Taking advantage of her distraction, Jonas suggested that Aquins used, uh, uh, by means of a tech, detect thought spell, scryed her mind for information. The result is that Bree was involved in a heist being planned by the local occultist and warlock, Mistress Kaelin, <laughs> of whom they, the, our party had met briefly once and also heard, wor- heard wind of, of her plans. Deciding that in- investigation was necessary, the party uh, well, broke into her shop, and Jonas there discovered some grisly uh, facts about the uh, occultist. Just a nice little old lady. Mostly the fact that beneath her uh, shop there was... <laughs> A uh, well, a ritual altar room that also served as an underground torture chamber. Yeah. Realizing that Bree had fallen in with the wrong crowd, and that this crowd was after something within the academy's walls, Aquinas and Jonas acted quickly and interceded on the part, uh, interceded on the part of the good of the city, and attempted to prevent Kaylin from achieving her goals, which resulted in open combat between them and her group. Yeah. Which did include Bree. Sort of. The events of the battle shocked Bree to the point that she was largely incapacitated for most of the fight and not really a participant. And eventually decided the fact that she simply fled and vanished. In the aftermath, they were able to defeat Caitlyn, though not without considerable casualties on the part of the local watch. Yeah, but at the very least, Jonas, through the use of his polymorph of the giant ape form, was able to bring the 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 watch officers killers down and prevent them from causing any further damage. In the end of it, they found a letter addressed to them that that uh, simply uh, said to Bree that she was simply sorry for the events and that that was the last they had heard of her. And that's what happened last time. Jonas got her magic ring, <laughs> Re got out of town, and Kaylin got what was coming to her. Yeah. And I think I'll turn it over to you now. Yeah, we found um, well, the squished bodies of uh, the assailants, uh, Kaylin and her uh, two thieves. Rose. Yes, uh, Butcher and uh, Kipper. Yep, uh, a substantial number of magic items, and we decided. Also, you robbed her safe. <laughs> oh yeah, I robbed her safe too. I, just, I didn't want her to get off scot free and all this. So anyway, she's dead. the end result. Yeah, she's dead. The end result is we have a bunch of things that I think we should just sell. We're gonna we're gonna cut this real short because yes. So the main thing here is of note is she did have. A ring of protection on her. Yes. Now, as tempting as it would be for you to get another one of these. No, that's fine. <laughs> the main 
caveat in that last fight was her having an insanely high spell save DC that caused both of us to be held, which we got really badly for us. Well. So Aquins, in recognition that is going to keep back the ring of protection and he's going to attune to it at some point before we go to bed and swap the iron stone for it in the pot of items we're going to sell. The end result is we're not going to bother tallying this up because it's a large amount of money. The iron stone alone is very expensive. Yes, yeah, yeah, so it's a very rare magic item. What we're going to do is we're going to sell them to <laughs> Rosemary. Uh, we're going to pool all that gold, divide it into five, put it in sacks or whatever it takes to carry this, and we're going to find Aldrich, and we're going to donate it to the families that lost, well, the five families that lost. Yes, the five families of the watch officers who died. Yes. So Obviously, we're taking keeping a little bit back, but that's mostly going to go towards like ink and paper yeah. and parchment and magical supplies for us. Yeah, we're just going to top up our supplies of ink and paper. Yeah. Um, actually, that's about it. Yeah. One other thing we should draw attention to, we have a new map of Valyria. No, we're going to get to that. Hmm. Uh, so we're going to go... The initial thing is, we're going... This is late. It was dark when we did this. So we're going to go... Yes. It, wasn't, it wasn't quite... Well, the sun had set, so it was evening. Uh, yeah, it's late enough anyway. We're also tired. Um, so we're going to go to and do a long rest. We're going to get up in the morning. And yes... Uh, we don't actually notice this initially because we're in the city. Yes. And you notice in the city, there's no snow. They have a magical snow clearing service. We don't know uh, because uh, we don't see all this. <laughs> we only see what's in the city at the moment. So We do I, know it's winter, though. We know it's winter, yeah. Yeah. So we get a long rest. Uh, we're going to forego all that because we'd like to condense some of this. So we yes. don't have too much time on it. Uh, then we're going to go to Rosemary's in the morning after we have our yep. uh, usual breakfast and stuff. And we're going to sell all that. Hmm. Divide it into five bags. Put them in a bag of holding because it's the only way we're going to be able to carry it. Uh, then we're going to go see Aldrich. Yes. Going to Aldrich is easy. Because he's not hard to find. He is actually in the inner, in the, at the moment, he's in the inner keep here in the training area for the White Knights. And we're going to go to his office. Yes. So I, instead of me rolling his reaction, what I'm going to do is uh, we say, well, tell him what we did, and then tell him what we intend on doing, and tell him we sold a bunch of stuff and a few other things that we had. Yes. And then we're going to pull out five. Rather large bags of gold. Yes, <laughs> we, I did it. We well, we did a kind of a quick estimate of this, and it's somewhere around twenty five hundred to three thousand per bag. Yeah, it's a lot of gold. Basically, we're going to be setting up these families for for life almost. Yeah. So what I would like you to do is roll a d twenty for me, please. This is going to be Aldrich's reaction to all this. Oh, I'm rolling this. Okay. Yeah. It's it's fun to do that every now. Am I and adding then. anything? Uh, this is basically a charisma response. So, let's roll it. Nineteen. He, I assume uh, that's high. Oh yeah, this is. Uh, he's actually without. He's stumbling over. He he can't speak. <laughs> he's at a loss for words. Well, to be fair, most of this stuff did that we sold did belong to Kaylin, so in many ways she's <laughs> posthumously making amends. No, she's not. No, she's not. <laughs> well, she's it, not she's, at all. She's posthumously paying for this. Yes. Uh, well, he, is, anyway, so. <laughs> he is, like I said, he's at a loss for words because yeah. it is most generous. Uh, the White Knights have well, basically, a wooden, widows and orphans fund anyway. Uh, it's a pittance compared to uh, what is being offered here. And like I said, he lost for words. He stands up, comes around the table, his, well, his desk, which is now probably creaking under the weight. Yeah, in addition to that, all the paperwork he's been having to do. And he 
shakes our hands vigorously and <laughs> says, there are no words to this. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I will make sure that the families are taken care of. Yeah. Well, if we weren't popular before in Lyria, now... <laughs> Wait till the word gets around about this. Yeah, uh, I mean, this is... Po- I'm not just even saying this is not even just in our campaign. I think this is one of the first times that I know, just, like, just from my experience, in Dungeons & Dragons, the entire history I've heard of the game, where a group of adventurers has given away that much money. What do we need for money, anyway? I don't know. We we did keep some back. <laughs> we have more than enough we're ever going to need. Well, I find that in as wizards, wizards are expensive. Yes, we are expensive, but we're not that expensive. No. So, that done. That I done. Want, I want to get that out of the way fast, because otherwise it would take up a lot of time. Yes, that's a lot of admin, which we did not sign it to be adventurous for. No. So, we're going to hand that over. Wish them a good day. A little bright bit of sunshine in his day where he's probably got a whole pile of paperwork to do. Yes. Problem with old cities is they're just full of bureaucracy. <laughs> anyway, so we're walking back. So we were here, or we're heading back. We obviously to get out this way. Yes, because that's where the King Crested Kingfisher is. So I assume we're going back to our inn. Yes. So we have to cross in front of the academy. And um there's a young lad there. Um, hard to say. You can roll an insight check if you like. He looks what we would call in modern terms a tween. Sure. Uh, insight? Oh, that was really low. Ten. Yeah, hard to tell. He's a tween. He's old enough to be enrolled in the academy, but probably not old enough to be an apprentice. He sees us, gets excited, runs into the academy. Okay. Then uh, a few minutes later, uh, an individual that we recognize uh, comes out not running. Um, she's, uh, uh, well, it's very difficult to tell the age of elves, but we know her. We've met her because she was at our wonderful lecture that we did. Hey, it was a good lecture. It was, it was it was okay. We didn't put anybody to sleep. Um, she was there in the front row. She's one of the heads of the school. We know her as I think it's Zanafia. Is that how you pronounce it? I think so. Yes. Yeah. So she is involved, as we know, in a lot of magical research. She's involved in uh, assessing items that came from the Isle of Fog. We're just going to yes. keep calling it that, even though it's no longer foggy. Uh, the name is probably going to stick. Yeah, and she's also involved in testing and fabricating and coming up with new ways of doing basically anything to deal with magic items. And she comes up and says, please, please, uh, can I have a moment of your time? I have a personal request, if you don't mind. All right, let's go over and uh, see what this is all about. (laughs) All right, she says, did you guys see my notice I have up in the library? I think we did, yes. <laughs> we did. Yes, we did. <laughs> he is currently trying out a new way of scribing scrolls. And it's in the experimental stage. Uh, but she is very impressed by how, let's say, <laughs> adventurous we are because we do not shirk from any kind of you know dangerous situation yeah so she has personally using this new technique scribed two scrolls one for each of us that pertain to well our i mean we even called ourselves fire and ice in the uh, tournament and we did did we <laughs> I we, did. we did and he also the spells we use tend to be, you know... Thematically catered. appropriate? Yes, they're catered to that. So she says, now, anyway, she motions us over to the side of the way of all the hubbub. She says, she has two scroll cases. This is, uh, one of them is contains a fireball, fireball scroll, and one contains an ice storm scroll. 
and I know you're both obviously a sufficient level to cast these. Uh, yes. I would like you to try it out, if you don't mind, and report back what kind of results you get from it. The technique is, it's new. Now, okay. there's, she, she assures us that there's minimal risk involved in this, uh, but she wants to know if this is something that will work long term. And she's quite willing, because of all the stuff we've done, to hand over two of these to us um, to try out and, and ask, are you willing? All right. So just to be clear, we're being handed two of these scrolls? One each. Uh, one fireball okay. and one ice storm. So you can write it down. If you're going to take this, yeah. write it down as experimental ice storm scroll. Okay. And I take you are willing to take them? Yes. Oh, this just makes her really happy because uh, first off, she's impressed with the skill that we've um, well managed to apport ourselves. Uh, she's very happy with that. A lot of the stuff we've done is uh, well, it's just excellent. She wish her, all her all her students would aspire to this. But anyway, she's like she's just thrilled because she knows that uh, we're going to put them to good use. We're not going to misuse them. And we know enough about magic not to get ourselves blown up. All right. So she shakes her hands. So thank you very much. And please, uh, once you've used them, uh, uh, find me. I'm usually, I'm almost all, just, I'm always here. Yes. <laughs> just send a runner and it'll come find me and let me know how to go. All right. So we'll give those a try when we get a chance. Yep. So yeah, you have. Curious to see how this goes because I myself make use of a lot of scrolls and inscribe a great deal of them. So let's see if this okay. experimental method is worth the investment. All right. So if you choose to, you, are you going to identify the scroll or are you just going to take it as is? Out of curiosity, I probably would identify this, but not in the middle of the street. <laughs> not in the middle of the street, just as she's walking away. All right. Um, so let's say we go back to the crested kingfisher first. Actually, as we're heading out, I ha Jonas has a suggestion. Um, Bree was hanging out with somebody. Yes, uh, she was. Uh, yes. Apparently, one of the someone she was hanging out with was was uh, Kaylin and her little group of misfits. Yeah, but there was another person that she was during the festival that she was almost alienating herself from the buskers and was more gravitating towards this other young lady. I am very curious to see if that person's still around. All right. Well, I think we did run into them. So I would have seen her friend. Yes, we, we knew we know where they were staying. Yep. So we I'm can just saying, back. is this a level of familiarity enough for a locate creature to work? Huh, that is a good question. Well, you've seen the person. I have. Probably on two occasions. So I'm not I'm not familiar enough with the spell. I'll bring it up one second. Okay. Yeah. Creature location as long as creatures in 30 feet are looking. A spell can locate a specific creature known to you or the nearest creature of a specific kind, such as a human or a unicorn, so long as you have seen such a creature up close within 30 feet at least once. Ah, uh, yeah, that definitely qualifies. Okay, so as so long as. So, yes. So I can attempt to locate her with locate creature then. Yes. The tide is in at the moment. The tide is in the water, so you want to go out into the urban area and take a look for her. Well, that's where she was. Um, just to be, just for clarification, I already have cast locate creature once this, this morning. We got up and I was lo looking for Bree after we got that letter. Oh, I didn't remember that. I do. I do because my character sheet clearly dictates the fact that I've cast a fourth level spell, and that's what it was for. I thought that was before our long rest. No, it would have been after. It would have been when we received the letter, which is in the morning. Oh, okay. That's fine then. 
So, so you still have enough to do this. I still have another fourth level spell slot, yes. All right. So we'll have to fly across the causeway because it is now awash with uh, very cold water. Well, we have brooms of flying for that reason. Yep. So and we'll now... get out the fantasy cliches and <laughs> take a fly. Yeah. And now this is what we see. A very lovely map, by the way. Yeah, it worked out pretty good. There are, well, as we go above the walls or outside the gates, we see that the world is white for the most part. Uh, and at this point, we do see the difference between the walled city of Lyria itself and the rest of the world, because inside it's, you can't even tell it's been snowing at all. Now, that may change as the snow accumulates, but for the moment, the insides are clear and dry, and outside, it's all white, except you'll notice uh, these streets are here, are seem to be relatively snow-free. Uh, that's not because of anything magical, that's because um, they've cleared them. Yep. Uh, there are, you can, well, in modern terms, there's snow banks now. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And uh, all right. yeah. so from our view from above, I say, all right, where do you want me to cast the spell? Because, well, I think the best thing to do is start at the inn where we saw them the most. Or sorry, right. where the two times we saw them. Yes, the, the times we saw them. Yep. So we'll start there. Yeah. Um, it was a relatively well, uh, uh, well, upper end yep. inn. So it's on uh, the main street, the main drag. Okay. Um, I think it'll be this one here. I can't remember exactly, but not really that important. All right. Well, we can wander around in the case because I can maintain concentration on the spell for up to an hour. And it's got the same 1,000 foot radius that Locate Object has. Okay. Well, once we get across the causeway, I assume we land. Yep. And... I'm going to take up from my component pouch the uh, forked twig, which now has the fur of the bloodhound tied around it. And I'm going to spin it in the same field of blue energy and cast locate creature. And I'm going to be looking for Bree's friend because we never bothered to learn her name. No, but she was human. She was human. But yeah. I can't just I can just look for that specific individual because I've seen her. Otherwise, it'll be spinning. otherwise it's going to point to you. <laughs> so uh, we're standing outside the inn. No response. All right, so it just keeps spinning. Well, how long do you want to wander around then? Because I can keep this up for a while. Uh, she might be out shopping. A thousand feet doesn't cover a lot of this. So roughly a thousand feet. This map is its not exact, of course. There's a lot more buildings than this. A thousand feet will probably be this length of block. So if we're standing here, we know this rough area right here. All right, well, let's wander around. Just, uh, and as much of a, basically a grid or pattern, I guess, as we can, just, to, just well, to fan out a little bit. I suspect if we cover the plowed streets, yeah. um, walking that way, we'll have encompassed the vast majority of uh, well, the suburbs of Lyria. Okay. So, an hour goes by. Your twig does nothing but spin. All right. So, nothing. The spell doesn't lo hasn't located her. She's not within uh, the confines of Lyria at this point, I think. No. If Bree has left, it's entirely possible that they went off together. I suggest one more thing. Let's go into the inn and see if we can... Oh. All right. Uh, once the spells rise across, I'll return the, the spell component to my component pouch, and let's go in and take a look. All right. We go in. Uh, very nice in. Actually, considering the time of day, we could have lunch if you like. Uh, that'll be fine, yeah. Yep. And then we can make inquiries about our good friend Bree Tealeaf. Uh, could you roll a persuasion check, please? Yeah, straight roll. Persuasion. Yeah. So, All right. You have, you, have a, you have a charisma modifier? I have a plus one, yes. <laughs> yeah. The opposite of yours. Yeah. Yes. 
You're much more personal than I am. I'll just slam it. Where is he? Uh, that landed. Okay. Uh, 17 total. So, yeah, yeah. I think I remember seeing you uh, once or twice around with Bree. Yes. Uh, she Until came two in... days ago, I had a stone orbiting my head. You're blue. Yes. <laughs> You're recognizable. Uh, anyway, yeah, we've there's a, not a whole lot of people in this town that don't know who we are at this point. Yeah, uh, she, I suspect uh, that's only going to grow in the next few days. Yeah, she came in uh, last night, dark, ran in, she looked really, really, well, hold on, let's see how perceptive this person is. Oh, she looks somewhat upset, it's hard to tell. She came running in, uh, went upstairs to uh, Lydia's room. Uh, she, Lydia's been staying here for quite some time. And that's the last I saw of her. All right. Well, I'll thank this person for their time. <laughs> And I say, well, it does. It seems like uh, Bree was in a little bit of shell shock, and uh, apart from writing us a very brief note, <laughs> has probably left. I think. Yeah. Uh, oh, before we head out, she says, "Oh, if you, uh, I haven't seen Lydia this morning. If you see her, give a reminder she owes me for uh, this week's uh, rent for the room." I will tell her that if I see her, as though I don't think that's going to be very likely. I assume you don't say that out loud, that last part. No. Yeah. Okay. Uh, unless you want to search her room, there's nothing else to do. Just I suppose her. we could, but I assume she took everything of importance with her. Yeah, most likely. Yeah. All right. We head out. Besides, rooms in inns tend to... If they're vacant, they tend to be rented out quite quickly. <laughs> and Well, apparently this landlord at the moment doesn't know that it's vacant. Do you want to take a look in her room? We might find something. Possible. I assume it's not too big of a deal if we want to just take a look in her room. as a... um, Are you going to ask? Yes, I am going to ask. Let's see. Don't want to, I'm not going to be going around sneaking. We're just trying to find out what happened. Wow. That's a waste of a natural 20. Oh, oh, oh seeing as you two, not a problem. She pulls it. Uh, just return this key to me when you're done. Um, this is what's well, basically a skeleton key. It opens up all the rooms. Okay. Uh, like, she apparently, we seem to have got a fan here. Someone who's probably at the tournament. Possibly, or just heard out all the other things we've done. Yep. Uh, anyway, yeah, she seems to respond very uh, favorably to what we were yeah. asking. And, well, it's not uh, too big of a. It's not too big of a thing to ask for. We're just <laughs> looking to see what happened to our friend who seems to have disappeared. Yep. All right. So we go up the stairs. Go to her room. I assume you're going to knock. I will. I'm fairly certain she's not in there. Well, there's no response. All right. Take out the key. Put it yep. in the lock. Yep. All right. Your passive perception is now 15, correct? Um, one second. No, it's 16. All right. You turn the key. Mm -hmm. The door opens. And I would like you to make a dexterity saving throw, please. Okay, Griff, she trapped the room. All right. All right. Well, I have a ring of protection now, so my dexterity yeah. saving throw is uh, better. Yeah, you're also proficient in them now, too. I am, yes. Well, this is a far cry from what it was at the beginning of the campaign. 25. <laughs> you, you know, you're not allowed to make these things, you know. <laughs> well, the, the second 19 I've rolled this session says otherwise. Well, uh, what happens is this. You turn the key in the lock, you open the door, which apparently seems to have attached to it a string, which goes to a mounted crossbow, which shoots directly out the door, which you managed to avoid. 
I look down at the, at the ring on my finger and says, I can see why you like these things. <laughs> well, before you start kissing it, it just, the, the crossbow bolt sticks into the wall behind you. And nothing else seems to be happening. All right. That is, immediately makes things suspicious. Yeah. It's amazing what a crossbow bolt going by your head does. I'm going to reach into my spell component, my component pouch, yep. and pull out a. Second, just because I want to get this right. A, I'm going to take out a small pinch full of a mixture of talc and talcum powder and powdered silver, uh -huh. and cast a sprinkle in front of my eyes and cast see invisibility. All right, you do so. Yeah. So for the next hour, I can see any invisible creatures and objects and into the ethereal plane. Well, I'll avoid whatever's in the ethereal plane because I'm not really up on what's there. No, uh, and it's also not why I'm casting the spell. Yes. Your images, uh, your view of the room does not change. All right, so no one, no one's invisible hiding in here waiting to take a prize from that trap. All right. Well... They could be hidden. Yes, they're just not invisible. Exactly. The spell doesn't cover any mundane methods of concealment. So, what would you like to do? Proceed with caution to this room, because now it seems like someone doesn't want us to search in here. Alright. So, you go into the room. Yeah. And... Can you imagine being a tenant and renting this room, and the first thing that happens after you unlock the door is you take a crossbow bolt in the chest? Yeah. All right. They said, let's fan out and investigate this room just to see if there are any other traps because we can have a good chance of surviving these. So everyone roll, else who comes through here, maybe not. Roll an investigation check. You can have advantage because I'll be helping you. Okay. I know it doesn't make any difference, but take out those glasses of minute scene. <laughs> it doesn't. It, it doesn't, doesn't help, I know. <laughs> It's just flavor more than anything else. Well, the advantage gets avoids a natural one. That's nice. Yep. All right. So the actual roll is uh, 17. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. These, this is actually a nice room. Uh, this is a higher end inn. Uh, it is probably more expensive than ours, even though ours is in the inner city. It has uh, a good sized bed. It has actual furniture. And it has you know lamps and that sort of stuff. Um, the other thing it has, it has a desk and a desk with you know nice drawers, a uh, good desk for uh, writing and that sort of stuff. It has an ink uh, bottle, quill, and paper and that sort of stuff. In your searching. Um, you notice at some point in time there's a bit of stickiness on you open the drawer and up, up near the top there's a, a bit of stickiness as if somebody was maybe adhering something to uh, the top of the drawer like just maybe something who knows and you notice that in that stickiness there is a page a piece of parchment that has either got uh, when they left or whatever uh, it got left behind. Okay, so there's a something someone has adhered to something to the top of this drawer, or just got stuck there. Uh, it, well, right now you just you you pull the drawer to have a look, mm -hmm. and you you feel it there, but you haven't pulled anything out yet, so you don't know. All right, I'm going to try and remove the page of parchment without damaging it. That will require a dex check, please. All right. Well, this seems relatively important, so I'm going to use one of my portents. All right. What are you going to use? Uh, well, the roll is 16 plus... So it's a dexterity check? Yes. Okay, so plus two, 18. Yes. Uh, more than enough. Yeah. Uh, you pull the door out all the way. You look up uh, to the area, and you see where it is. And you notice that it's actually not a full page. It is part of a page. Uh, obviously, in some sort of hurry, 
uh, someone was removing stuff from here and it got torn. Maybe the adhesive was too strong. Who knows? But you managed to get it off without damaging any further. Yeah. And yes, uh, it is um, well part of a note, part of something. You don't know. It is writing okay. on it. Is it in a uh, language I know? Nope. It is not in a language you recognize either. All right. So we're fairly certain there's no uh, other traps in this room. You detect no traps. All right. I'll sit down on the bed, take out my spell book, and I'm going to take out the uh, mixture of salt and soot, and I'm going to ritual cast Comprehend Languages. All right. Uh, some time goes by. Ten minutes goes past us, yes. Yep. You do uh, succeed in casting a spell, obviously. Yes. This is indeed a torn out page. It is a journal, uh, a page from, uh, uh, actually, I would say not an actual journal, but kind of like a makeshift journal. Yeah. Excuse me. Um, it looks like she was, uh, whoever was in this room was keeping notes about things. Mm-hmm. And uh, in the rush to leave, uh, yeah. managed to tear her page, her page. I'll just ask the obvious question that this isn't, I don't recognize this as Bree's handwriting. Hmm. Would you have seen Bree's handwriting? I can roll for it if you want. Uh, no, you have. But her she's a little distraught recently. Mm-hmm. So this the recent one will be her note saying she I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, but she was really, you know, having issues. Uh you would have seen possibly her putting notices like uh, written notices up at her inn on the plateau. Yeah. Uh, write a roll a memory check, please. Yeah. Also, we've known her entirely. Yeah. All right. So, so just be intelligence uh, fifteen. Yeah, more enough. That's fine. Uh, no, it's not Bree's handwriting. All right. So let's assume this is Lydia's, if that is indeed her name, because well, people who set up crossbows <laughs> traps in an in room are not trustworthy. All right. This is actually dated. This is dated for all right. What all right, we haven't made up um we haven't made a calendar, no. No, so we're gonna go by just a general art calendar. Yeah. And this is da- dated for so that would have been then. This is dated for actually the day that Kalen's heist was planned. So yesterday. Uh, yes. Sorry, yes. Uh, <laughs> it'll be in the morning, though. Okay. So, and it's uh, written in uh, very short uh, note keeping fashion. Yeah, so uh, shorthand. Uh, just try like bullet points, whatever you want to call it. Yes. It is basically what it says is plans going well. Um. Target is set up perfectly. Uh, I am going to, oh, sorry, um, um, help. One sec. Okay. Um, yes, it says plan's going well. Target is set up perfectly. Uh, evacuation forthwith. And then there's a this is getting down to where the tear is now. It starts off by saying, uh, we'll take her. That's and then it cuts off. Yeah. Well, by the sounds of it, I think Lydia may have been involved with some of uh, the problems Bree has been facing recently, as I show I, I can't, obviously, I'm showing you the paper, but I'm going to explain what it says. And the fact that the target mentioned, I assume, is going to presumably be Bree? Plans proceeding. Yeah. Uh, target set up perfectly. And then basically some sort of evacuation setup where yeah. uh, 
All right. Well, this sounds like relatively standard thief uh, talk. Yeah. I say, well, well by the way, uh, it is in Thieves' Camp. Okay. So it is in Thieves' Camp. Yeah. Okay. Which, yeah, comprehend languages to work on that. That's fine. Yeah. It's the language. It's, yeah, it's... it is a language. And... So, by the sounds of it, Bree may not have gotten involved in this. Uh, Poor li- the poor life choices which uh, have she's been involved with recently by her own volition. I think she was pushed into it a little bit. Pushed? Coerced? Who knows? Hmm. But someone does not have her best wishes at mind. That's basically what I can get out of this. Yes. I mean, I wouldn't want to <laughs> think kindly of anyone who refers to me as a target. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it doesn't have any good connotations to it, does it? No. Well, I think we can confirm the fact that they're both not here now. Yeah. I suggest we dismantle this trap. Yes. Remove the materials. Mm-hmm. Pull the crossbow bolt out of the wall. Yeah, before, before our maid comes along and gets freaked out. Yeah. Lock the door on our way out. Yeah. And... Return the key. And says, uh, uh, no, Lydia? Um, like no, was... I think she's left Lyria. Without paying her bill. Yes. Heavy sigh. Well, I guess there's nothing I can do about that. Um, I've got four gold pieces. All right, then. <laughs> okay, off we go. Off we go. <laughs> We've given hey, this child more than today. enough charity. <laughs> <laughs> no, my conscience is clear. <laughs> yeah. uh, insight check, please. Is it just to show how little I care about this 10? Mm, yeah, there, it doesn't show anything. Hey, we go out. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that killed another couple hours. <laughs> All right then. Well, <laughs> unless we want to go after them, in which case we don't know where they went. Go where? I know that's the thing. If your locate creature was, you know, a hundred miles, that'd yeah. be a different story. No. The only spell I have that reaches even close that distance is clairvoyance, and then it's just a guessing game, me placing a sensor up in the uh, in the air and looking through it. No, I haven't gotten, uh, I haven't uh, learned how to scry properly yet. That's probably going to be our best bet of ever finding Bree again. Well, for the moment, she is a person somewhere. I mean, technically, there is a scrying pool in the universe, in the academy. But we don't know the spell. There were a number of people. All right, roll it. Actually, roll a intelligence check, please. 12. There were a number of observers during this that were watching what was going on in the pools. And some of them looked really quite young. Yes. And one point of clarification before I forget. Uh, this is all snow. Uh, this is not a sheet of ice. What this is, is ice that's being pushed by waves against the shore. Okay. So it's not solid. It's just like a, a slurry of ice and water and snow. Okay. Just want to clarify that. Cause... Yeah, that's fine. The only other, the other thing that I come to the fact is, even if we did try and convince someone else to scry on Brie for us, there's a very good chance it may not work. We know who she is, but yes, okay, getting a stranger to scry on someone means there's a good chance the spell might fail. Uh, it is a possible option if you want to go that route. It seems, first of all, there seems to be an awful lot of traffic in that scrying pool at the moment. I think there's a lot of interesting research going on over in the Isle of Fog. And so we may not be able to get time on it anyway? Uh, We have to get someone to cast that spell. Yes. There are a limited number of people who can cast that spell. Yes. 
And they only can cast it a limited number of times per day. Yes. Also, Bree technically is a wanted criminal at the moment. Yes, do we really want them to know where she is? <laughs> no. Uh, well, Alright, we have a fair amount of credibility in this town. Yes, we do, mm. but we are not above the law. And Lyria does respect the letter of the law above all else. Oh, no, I wasn't referring to that. I suspect if we make that request, and considering the fact that she is a criminal on top of that, uh, they may consider it a good idea. We could jump the queue or whatever you want to call it. I don't think it's worth it. Just with all the various problems that could go in, along with that plan. Yeah, we could be sending a squad of white knights after her because that was not a small thing that happened there. No, uh, she was admittedly only partially involved. But I think the best bet, if we want to actually look for Bree again, is wait till I actually can cast the spell myself. What and then... Spell? What? What level spell? Trying is fifth. So shouldn't take too much effort, too much more effort in research before I can, I'm able to cast the spell myself. All right. But Sounds yeah, good. I think that I don't think the rewards outweigh all the risks there. The problem with it hmm. is we could get her in arrested. In serious trouble, yeah. And we're not, I mean, I'm not Lydia for what she is. Um, is not going to let her prize go. I'll just call her that because yes. it seems to be something she's working towards. So there could be collateral damage again. <laughs> yes. So anyway, it was just a thought. Yes, it was. All right. So you wanted to identify those scrolls, you said. Yes, we can head back to the Crested King for sure to do that. All right, so we head back there. Uh, it's getting later in the afternoon. Um, not quite time to eat yet, but go up to our rooms. Uh, you ritual cast and I'll ritual cast. <laughs> Detect magic. I think you mean yeah. I don't. Sorry, yes, my bad. <laughs> I uh, think it's really obvious that they're magical scrolls. Well, that would be a, that would be a surprise. <laughs> they weren't. Identify is not going to tell us anything. No. All right. The identify scroll uh, spell works. Uh, yeah. The scroll is identified, and it is indeed a scroll of Ice Storm. But I would like you to roll an Arcana check at this point. All right. 24. It's not... Exact. It's not the same. You've made scrolls before. Have you ever made a scroll of Ice Storm? I have. I have two on me currently. All right. There's something different about this. It is literally a scroll of Ice Storm, but it is done in a different way. You're not entirely sure what it is. There's something about the magic involved in the scroll, uh, in either the ink or the parchment or the combination thereof. Uh, it has. Not variability involved, but it has the potential of being more powerful. So it might be cast at a higher level? It is not something that is within the range of Identify. All right. So something different. They've done something. Some new technique, new ink, who knows. They've managed to create a scroll uh, full of potential. Like our like the your ring and my grimoire is just a, it's just but it, that's as far as I've gotten. It's a consumable magic item that might do more. Exactly, it might have more involved in it, but again, until we use it, yeah, uh, you will not know. But it is what it says on the paperwork. Okay, <laughs> it is a scroll of ice storm. Uh, it might have more bang for the buck. All right, we'll, we'll see how that works out when we come to that. All right, I would like you to roll a perception check, please. No advantage, no nothing, just roll. Uh, uh, eight. <laughs> okay. So after we have our little discussion about the new scrolls, yeah. 
uh, probably are going to talk about it for a few minutes anyway. It is roughly time to go and eat, so we'll go have a supper. Yep. And then, uh, yeah, unless you want to do any particular things like scroll making, whatever, it is now dark. Dark comes fast. Yep. Uh, as for scroll making, well, yeah, I should check on that myself. I mean, there is only one room for one more scroll in my scroll case after picking up that last one. <laughs> yeah. And from Xanathea, so... No, I think for the moment I'm going to be fine with what I have. All right, so what do I have? Got that and that. Yeah, same here. Actually, I just ended up with all this extra uh, paper and ink. And I have done nothing today. So I think I will actually make uh, another scroll. I'm going to make a scroll of Polymorph. Because it's my okay. favorite spell at the moment. All right, then. So I don't have enhanced ability prepared, do you? No, I do not. All right. It's gonna be, what's the DC for this? It's a fourth level, so 14? 14, yes. And you get to add your spellcasting ability. A 10. <laughs> That's not it. One point of luck. Two points of luck. No. Oh, third time's the charm. That was getting me worried there for a second. There were some bad numbers. I see you're still burning through your luck. Well, we are going to bed. Hmm. All right, so that gives me... One additional polymorph scroll. Yep. And because I am, it's in my wheelhouse, it only cost me two pages of paper and ink. Yep. Cool. Uh, that will come in handy. Yes. Like, like I said, I love that spell. <laughs> yes, it is quickly becoming one of your most commonly used ones. Yeah. Well, look what it did last time. You took uh, Kalen's entire team apart with the giant ape. Well, in fairness, your uh, frost breath made that a lot easier. Uh, one of them. Yeah. All right. Uh, after that, it's basically bedtime. Yep. So uh, we'll I'll set up the hut. Uh, you'll set up your alarms. Yes. Uh, we get our familiars out. Yes. Um. See, now I'm working on the scroll. Uh, I'll take first watch. Yeah. My watch goes by uneventfully. All right, my turn. Yep. All right. Uh, 24. What was the number you rolled? 18 plus 6. Oh. Um. Not yet used to that. <laughs> ah, skilled. Such a useful feat. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we are now... Uh, halfway through the night, I guess. So we're in the wee hours. You hear movement in the room next door. I hear movement in the room next door, all right? Which yeah. room? Unless we're on the very end of the... of one of the... All right. When you're facing your door... Yes. That way. All right. So... All right. So, the left room, all right, in that case. Yes. So, okay. as we go in, mm -hmm. it would be the next room along. It's hard to tell, but it sounds like maybe something scraping on wood or um, creak in the floor. It's hard to tell. You rolled really well, but it was very, very difficult to detect. All right. I took first watch. 
So, yes. so you're asleep. Have, I'm asleep, and you have had your rest. Oh, so I am fully recovered. Right. Yeah. Uh, except you don't get your new portents till dawn, or does that work on long rests? It works on long rests. Oh, my bad. Yes. All right. So you're still asleep at this point. I'm asleep. You just heard a noise. But we finished our long rest. So the dome is gone? Have. I'm in the middle of mine. Okay. Technically, it breaks up because we do the watches. Yes. All right. Well, I guess I can leave you inside the hut for the moment to get your rest. I'm gonna. So something is happening in the room. Well, I can't cast a spell inside the hut anyway, so we have to get up and out of that. You can cast it inside, and then you can leave the hut and bring it with you. Yes, yeah. but a spell that has an effect outside the hut doesn't work. No, because what I'm thinking of is casting clairvoyance in the next room over and seeing what's going on. Yeah. It is dark in here. It is dark in here. Yeah, we're sleeping. We didn't have during your watch. Do you have a light going? No. The interior of the hut is lit, I presume. Or it can be. It can be. It currently yes. is not because we're I'm sleeping. Unless you're working on a scroll. Is the, hmm? is the window not open closed? Drapes are drawn or something? Well, yeah, I mean, the window's closed. It's winter. Shutters are drawn. Yeah. And I'll also, cast light on my staff, of, then, I guess. It's two in the morning. <laughs> no. So it's dark. I'll cast light on the end of my staff, then, I guess. Before or after you leave the hut? After. All right. I'll still see it anyway. Hold on a second. See if I wake up from this. Because this is unusual. Nope. <sighs> All right, you're sleeping. Yep. I have a staff covered in blue-green bilums and algae. That's going to be funky looking for colors, I tell you. Everything looks like it's underwater at the moment. Yes, it does. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, you light up. What else? All right. Hold on a sec. <laughs> you hear a scuffling. In the next uh, room over. Same direction as the last time. All right. Well, I you know I can summon my familiar on the opposite side of a door. I don't think I can summon her on the opposite side of a wall. Technically, you do not need to see where you want her to summon. You're going to tell me specifically how far away. Yes. And as long as that place is not occupied. Well, works. that's why the other opposite side of a door is easy. Well, the opposite side of a wall is not too much harder, as long as you're giving a bit of fair. I light. don't know how thick the walls are in here. Clearly not that thick because we can hear something going on in the other room. Yes. All right. Uh, uh clairvoyance would work work around that, but that takes a ten minutes. If there's a fight going on, which it could easily be with a scuffling sound, it could be it'll yeah, it be was... over. I would like you to roll an intelligence check, please. Yeah. Twenty three. It was faint. Right. All right, I'm just checking one thing here. One second. All right, so this is something you're currently thinking about doing. We're going to do it in real time. What do you mean? You're consuming time. Okay. All 
And was in the air for okay. I don't have to see the destination. That works. All right. I'm going to go to the door of our room. Mm -hmm. I'm going to exit our room. Doesn't set the alarm off because it's you. Yeah. I'm going to go over to the uh, uh, next the door of the next room. Okay. And I'm going to cast Arcane Eye on the other side of the door because the spell does not specify and it needs to be a point within range that I can see. Just with I can create the eye within 30 feet of me. Okay. So I'm just going to have, create the eye on the opposite side of this door. All right, so let me do that. All right, the eye appears on the other side of the door. All right, and I get to, I receive mental images from whatever I see. It's dark. Yeah, it has dark vision. Oh, it does. I thought it was just your vision. Nope, it received. It has a limited range of thirty feet, but it has normal vision and dark vision. Okay, well, thirty feet is basically the room because yeah, uh, they're not sixty feet around. Okay, what you see is first off, blue green light coming from underneath the door. Yes. In the room itself, you don't see anything. Now, I would like you to roll a perception check. And it's just you, so no advantage or anything. Reception, uh, 15. All right, so this is what you see. Yeah. There's a room. Uh, it looks typical. It's like no real difference between this room and the room that we are occupying. Yeah. Uh, there's not. It's not a fancy desk, but there's a table there. It seems to be papers on it. Um, looks like somebody was doing something kind of writing or whatever. And. The bed looks like it was slept in. It's not made or anything. It's been tousled. And roll of 15. That's it. All right. Well, I can go back to my to the room now and leave the eye there. Yes. You yeah. can, technically, you can move the eye wherever you want. Yes. I think it's, what, 30 feet around or something? You can move 30 feet around, and it doesn't matter how far away I am from it, as yeah. long as we're on the same plane of existence. 30 feet around is your move rate, so if you just walk back to the room, yeah. you can, like, the distance between you is expanding at 30 feet around, so that's why. Yes, anyway. Yeah. I'm just going to leave it there where it is on the, on the other side of the door, though. It's invisible. I'm going to go back into our room. Still going to keep concentrating on the spell so I can see through it to see if anything changes. Are you keeping the light going on your staff? Uh... Once we're in... Once I'm in the other... and Back in our room, I'll douse it. All right. So, and are you going to get back in the hut, or are you just going to stay in standing in the room? Right, I just need a point of clarification. I don't lose concentration on this. The spell doesn't keeps working even if I do that. If you go through, the yeah, hut, you can't cast spells through it. Yeah. You could have cast arcane eye for my interpretation of it inside the hut and have it leave the hut. Yes, but the eye has. Uh... Limitations. I can't. What it can go through. Yeah, it can't go through a wall. No, that's the limitation because we have cast uh, light on a rock and thrown it through the hut, and it works fine. Right. So, so I'll yeah. go back into the. Sure, I'll go back into the hut for the moment. All right. I would like you to roll a perception check, please. No, this is getting worse. Nine. All right. You don't hear anything. All right. Do I see anything through the eye? The eye is purely visual, but yeah, that will be a separate perception check, please, because it's you have to think about it differently. 
11. All the good numbers are on stuff that didn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> That's the way it always is. Well, I can take concentration on this spell for up to an hour. Okay. This is going to be a timing thing. I would like you to roll a d20 for me. and It has nothing to do with anything other than just timing. I want to uh, let me know if it's below five or below or 15 or above. Two. Okay. This is what happened. Um, you remember this now as you're thinking about it. But this has well, this is what happened. You went back through the doors into the room, thought about it for a few seconds, doused your light, and went into the hut. Yes. And at, I assume at all times you have kind of in your almost like a schizophrenic view between what's happening in there and happening in your actual what you're seeing. You don't really need to concentrate too much unless you really want to get specifics. I, the only thing I have to do is maintain concentration on this spell. I receive mental images through it at all times. Okay. So this is what happened. You went into the room. You didn't hear anything. Um, your eyes sitting there looking out. Huh. And for a second, you saw a flash of blue-green light. Very, very small for just a second as you were dropping your uh, light spell. Okay, so there's a hole. And then you went and sat in the hut and you said, wait a minute. You saw light in the other room when your light spell was going. Yeah, so there's a hole in the wall now between our two rooms. That is what you would draw from that, yes. All right. So obviously we're being spied on. Well, now we're spying on someone in there. Okay. A very short amount of time goes by. When uh, this all happens at the same time, a person appears in the room. Okay. This as they are going through the motions of casting a spell. I would like you to roll a d20, please. All right. Am I adding anything? Uh, perception. All right, 13. All right. You notice... Oh, you rolled really high. Uh, you notice him appear as in our room what appears are eight rather short spiky little dudes that will require an arcana check for you to understand what they are. 20. They are steam methods. Okay. The spell that was just cast was Conjure Minor Elementals. All right, then. You were not surprised. No. Because you were alert. We're also in a hut. You're also in a hut. And I am going to see if I notice any of this and whether I'm surprised or not. I'll be waking you up at this point. I uh, currently mm -hmm. have no idea what's going on. <laughs> I am asleep. Okay. I would like you to roll... Initiative, please. Oh, I'm surprised. Oh, this will be the initial part later on. You're asleep. I'm asleep. So I'm going to have... You do still technically get initiative. Yeah. What do you have? Eight. <laughs> That's just wrong. What? Right. Nothing. You'll find out soon enough. All right. Uh, I'm asleep. Yes. Uh, your initiative is up now. What are you going to do? 
I'm going to jostle you awake. You wake me up. Okay, I'm fuzzy. I can't do anything. Also, uh, my initiative was nine, so technically yeah. I act before you. I'm pointing uh -oh. out silently all of the uh, the methods in the room. Yep. That wakes you up. That's a little adrenaline shot. Good. I'm going to stand up and get out of the hut. I would like you... You're going to actually get out of the hut? Yes. Okay. I would like you to roll uh, a perception check as you're thinking about doing this, please. Um, actually, a lot of it's going on, so make it at disadvantage. Uh, uh, this is back to when I had terrible perception. 13. You don't notice anything. Okay, so you use your movement for this round is to get out of the hut. Alright, I still have my arcane eye going. Yes. What's you happening see, in the other room? You see a robed figure. Uh, well, basically, you're seeing it kind of at an angle, mostly from the back. Looking through the hole, and they were making uh, motions, and that's when the steam method showed up. And you still see that, yeah. and it looks like well, they might be getting ready to cast another spell. All right. I cast Dimension Door. I can see in that other room, so I'm going to appear directly appear five feet behind that individual. All right. Do you need to leave the room? Sorry. Do you need to leave the hut to cast Dimension Door? Yes, I do. Okay, I so did. You step, you step outside. Oh, yes. What is your dexterity? No modifiers. Alright. So you step out of the hut. Yes. At which point? Eight steam efforts that were holding their action are now going to. Oh, wait, I can hold your action for something. I can't see. No, actually, I'm not going to do that because that's. Uh, they wouldn't. They wouldn't know what to do. So you step out. They all focus on you initially, but currently their initiative is somewhere else. Well, then I'm going to conjure the glowing portal of my Dimension Door spell that looks like a whirlpool in space, step through it, and step out of another portal directly behind this individual in the next room. Alright. So you do that. You've used your movement. You've used your action. You've used your bonus action, so you're basically done. I used my bonus? Okay. Yeah, That's good. Yes. Yep. Alright, so I'm going to be there. So now I can see myself in the room with the other person. Yeah, that's going to be really weird. No, it's not. It's not, not weird for me at all. I do this, all, this sort of thing all the time. So, as you appear there, yeah. the next thing you notice is he is casting a spell. Or it's casting a spell. Do I recognize this spell? Uh, I would give you... Your back is to this person. I will give you a chance, but it'll be a disadvantage. Why would my back be this person? Whatever. Because <laughs> they're facing away from you. They're facing the wall. Yeah, I can. don't have to appear in the same orientation. So, an arcana check? Uh, sorry, you're, you're under misunderstanding. They're up right against the wall, looking through the hole, mm -hmm. and you're behind them. Yes, all right, anyway. You can't, you can't appear in front of them, because there's no. a wall there. Ten yes. for arcana. Uh, do you have Dispel Magic on your spell list currently? Like, I mean, I know it. Do you know the spell? I know the spell, yes. Okay, that's what's being cast. All right, so I also have it prepared. Well, I assume... He's, You're familiar with it. He's dispelling the hut. No, unless he's ca casting Dispel Magic. So has he noticed me? We're going to get to that next, because I would like you to roll stealth. And we're going to see how perceptive he is. Uh, 
Uh, 13. I did just step through a glowing magical portal. Well, true to our campaign, he is too focused because he rolled way bad. Then I am going to let his spell go through. All right. You don't know what happens because you're not there. I think I know what happened. All right. So, we now come to the top of the round. Definitely was not me. No. It was not him. And it's not me. That was the methods. Steam methods. And the hut has just disappeared. I thought it was going to be that. And I'm basically just rubbing my eyes and getting used to the world as eight steam efforts see me and attack. All right. I will roll over to the page where they are. I see no you. There's no light, except the steam efforts kind of give off a bit of a hazy heat. Yeah. It's bloody dark in here, and I have... What are they going to do? They weren't told specifically what to do, so they're going to do what they normally would do. They are going to try and smack me. I think he can give them mental instructions. Nope. Verbal. Oh. Oh, no, it's... it's uh... This is the higher grade summoning spells that do that, I guess. Yeah, so no, you can tell him what to do, but he hasn't had a chance yet. But they can attack. Yes, it is what they do. Yep, they're not nice. So, they're methods. So, they have that. Oh, those two myths. One rolls a natural one. Not sure what he's doing. Uh, I don't think all eight can get on me because that pool is excessive, so I'll make it six. Six rolls to hit me. Not a single one hits me. They're not very powerful. Well, that's six rolls. I only have to make 14 by <laughs> armor class. But I'm sitting here and they're all going Rarrr! and not a single one gets near me. So they're clawing the air above you. Or around me or something. Who knows? Alright. Now, it's my turn. Yes. Because I realize that there are... Well, I know the spell. I, don't... I know what they are. I know what happened. So there's a couple of options. Someone's cast, obviously, Conjure my Elementals. I can do nothing about getting rid of them beyond possibly annoying or breaking the concentration of the person who cast the spell. In another room. That I know nothing about. <laughs> the only person who knows what's going on is not here. <laughs> no. Don't worry, I'll be doing something about this in a moment. I don't know what to do. <laughs> I will look at my prepared spell list and see if anything on here is worth doing. I mean, I could... Well, I can't. They're steam weapons. I can't even hurt them with magic for most of my stuff. <sighs> wow. Well, considering that I have literally no clue what's happening, I think the only thing I can really do at this point is... Well, cast mirror image. Make it a little harder for them to hit me. And make it even harder for them to hit you. Yep. And I say, okay, what's going on? <laughs> As I get my brain functioning. So that's my round. Move along to the next person in the order. Which is me. You. You have. Oh, yeah, hold on a sec. This guy's not stupid. You have been noticed because you were not in the hut where you were supposed to be. 
and that's no longer there. And Cowled Figure has now noticed that you're in the room with him. Well, he was about to notice that anyway. All right, so there you go. Well, I mean, you're standing right there. <laughs> He's right in front of you. Well, how far behind him do you want to teleport? I said five you're feet. Old... Oh, yeah. All right, so yeah, he's right there. <laughs> All right, I'm going to cast Frost Breath. I'm going to inhale and then exhale freezing cold at him. And All I'm right. going to give him a portent for his saving throw. Oh! <laughs> Poor bugger doesn't even get to roll. Nope, not. Can he succeed with an eight? All right. Let's see. What do we have here? Constitution save. Does he have plus nine? That'd be very impressive. Hold on a sec. Cast that. Cast those. Cast that. Those. Okay, so keep track of the spells. Um, he sees what you're doing, and he moves his hands in a very familiar pattern, and he casts Counterspell. As a reaction, I will counter his Counterspell. <laughs> All right. Did he cast at third level? He cast, roll? he cast it. I'm sorry, what? Do I have to roll for my counter spell? Uh, no, you do not. Okay. Actually, we. Oh. Do well. What? Yeah. Okay, this is going to get really silly real fast. He counters your counter spell. He can't. Oh, he can't. That's right. Because he only has one reaction. Yeah. <laughs> Not right. if he's countering my frost breath, then he cannot counter my counter spell. All right. Okay. Well, I'm gonna get into those silly chains where eventually someone runs out of spell slots. Yes, because we have only one reaction. So I bring up my hand to counter his counter spell in true blue magic tradition as I frost breath him. All right. Roll your damage. Uh, unfortunately, the damage isn't very good. What'd you do? 14 points of cold damage. Ow. He is frozen, though. And yep. now he needs to make a concentration check. <sighs> Just against DC 10. Going so far south for him. Oh, he failed? The methods disappear. No, well, I don't know that. I know that. Yeah. I'm really confused now. I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> All right. So that's gone. That's gone. We're in that kind of panic mode at this point. I have burned through most of my higher level spell slots. This stuff, you moron. So, what are you going to do? Well, being frozen in ice, which he just barely is, does not prevent him from casting spells. Just barely is okay. He just barely, he just barely failed your saving your spell save. I would give him an eight. <laughs> Oh, sorry. I, sorry, I ended up rolling back before that. But yeah, no, he he <laughs> failed by miles then. Um, he can still cast a spell. Yes, he can still cast spells. All right, he is casting a spell. I guess I'll see if I recognize it. 
Uh, you can't counter it anyway. No, I'll still see if I recognize it. Yep. You kind of rhymed a nice, and it is dark in here, and you do not have dark vision. Uh, you can kind of see it through your arcane eye, but this is a pile of stuff going on. Uh, we'll do this at disadvantage, please. Uh, 11. It is a spell. It's on your spell list. He is misty stepping. Okay, but he's not leaving the room then. Why? 30 feet to a place he can see. Uh, he's no longer in the room. Oh, does he have a ring of x-ray vision, or did he just go into the other room? You don't know he's not in the room. All right. Well, something is going on there. Roll a uh, perception check, please. Uh, 15. You hear from the other room. Holy crap. Who are you? Where'd you come from? <laughs> and you recognize it as my voice. Okay, so he's gone in there. Well, he does have a hole. <laughs> so, yes, he misty stepped into... <laughs> our room. Yep, and now he's using his movement because uh, your alarm spell goes off. The one on the door. The door should be locked. Well, it's lockable. With this. Oh, I suppose he can unlock it from his side, yes. Yeah, <laughs> he doesn't need a key. Uh, so he unlocks the door, your alarm goes off, and he's out in the hall. Okay. Then, I can scratch the methods off the bloody list. Useless things. <laughs> I'm glad I don't have that spell anymore. I didn't bother getting that spell this campaign. Yes. So he's done that. Next person up on the list is me. Someone has just. Are you going to me. do anything in this fight? Well, now I know what's going on. I, in fairness to me, I woke up. In fairness to you, I pointed out all the methods of the room and then teleported. Yeah, but I was just waiting. Then the hut disappeared. They all attacked me. Then they all disappeared. This guy appeared, ran out the room, and now this has all happened in six seconds. <laughs> so now that I'm awake, I do not like what has happened because. <laughs> do you even know what has happened in a curiosity? <laughs> no, but I know someone just ran through the room, appeared in the room, and then ran out of the room. Yep. And I assume you had something to do with that. So I am going to... Well, I have four of me. So I'm going to cast first level spell. Expedition's Retreat. And I'm going to set my stone to uh, fire resistance because of the steam methods and I may come up again. Okay. And then I'm going to give chase. I can easily overtake this individual at this point. But I've used my action. <laughs> Some movement and a bonus action. Is it extra straight a bonus action? It is, yes. Oh, that's right. I can do a non-magic act. I'm going to try grappling him. Woohoo! Well, I mean, it's all I have. I would like you, you to roll... a firebolt at him. Hmm? You could throw a firebolt at him. I can fireball him in the back. I can actually, I can use one of the beads of fireball and burn this place to the ground. <laughs> Don't do that! I can magic missile him with my wand of magic missile is just finally recharged. Um, you could stab him with your new knife. No, I want to know what's going on here, so I am going to. I'll roll intelligence check. Well, that's pretty high. That would be my best course of action. I think just polymorph into something useless. No, you can't. No, I can't. You cast oh, a I spell. Have to have to. Sorry, that's yeah. a cantrip. All right, I'm not going to firebolt him that because I want to know what's going on. And he looks like he's already taken a bit of damage because he seems a little chilly. <laughs> I am going to try and grapple him. Can you roll a 20 sided, please? His chance to. Oh, no, I roll well. 19. 
Alright, whose decks is that? We both rolled exactly the same number, but I have a better dex modifier. Except grappling is strength. Is it? Yes. Oh. So we roll exactly the same number. What does that mean? <laughs> uh, Reroll, I guess. All right. <laughs> Nine this time. He evades me and runs down the stairs. Well, hang on a minute. Well, oh, sorry. He evades me grappling him. Yes. And we're at the top of the stairs. Yes. All right. Now we come to my turn, I assume. Now you come to your turn. All right. I will exit his room via the door the same way he did with us. Okay. Um, you saw nothing of this. But you did. Uh, well, perception. You probably hear the... You, you, her alarm went off. Never mind. You don't have to. Yes, I heard the, uh, the alarm went off. So I know he's in the hall. Yeah. So you go out the room. And my perception check will be a 22 to find him. Uh, it's easy because we're there's two guys at the end of the hall at the top of the stairs. You assume that some sort of physical interaction. You can see both of us. The common room is almost always lit. Yeah. It is dim light, but you can see us. Are you still concentrating on Arcane Eye? Uh, for the moment, yes. All right. I'm, that might drop. I might have to do something else to him. I'm currently concentrating on Expeditious Retreat. Yes. Well, I do have a web scroll I could try casting on him. I lose Arcane Eye. So I uh, did that. Gotta make sure I keep track of his spell slots. Well, if you want to capture this person, that is really my only my my only option. Hey, okay. uh, you have no idea what's going on. What do you mean? Do you, like whether what my intents are? We haven't had yeah, but I know what my intents are, <laughs> and I want to find out what's going on here. All right. I'm going to take out from my scroll case the scroll of web, and I'm going to read it. Yep. And for the second time that I cast this spell. I am going to cast Web, filling that space with both you and him in it. Well, it would be very, very difficult with us tossing yes. to avoid. Alright, so I'm going to send a blast of webbing in that area, basically. I'm going to fill as much of the space there as I can. And Web is concentration, so I lose uh, Arcane Eye. Alright, so first I'll roll his saving throw. This is Dex? Yes. Alright. And roll my saving throw. <laughs> I had one point of luck left. I'll use that. <laughs> oh! That's impressive. Okay. Alright, your spell goes off. Yep. You, the corridor at the end of, at the top of the stairs is now filled with webbing. Yes. It's dark now here because it's blocking the little bit of ambient light we got from the common area uh, because it's filling the hall. Okay. That's my action. Yep. I guess I can move a bit closer if I have any movement left. Uh, hell yeah, you can move a bit closer. You can only move a half your right. Well, I'm going to move close as I can to it so I can see the, basically the edge of the web. All right. So. Well, it's dark. Yeah. So. Yeah, but even with, uh, I guess, is it like pitch black in here? Like total darkness? It's as close as you can get because you got webbing blocking the only ambient light from the common area. All the doors are closed, and all the windows are closed because it's winter, and all the shutters are drawn because it's winter, mm -hmm. and you don't have any night vision at all. Uh, anyway. And Alice isn't out, so... Uh, no. Well, technically see. she was, but she was back in the room, but that's fine. Oh, that's right. She's she's back in our room. 
All right, well, you can't do anything with that because he's in our room. No, I, I'll, I'll just call it uh, Jonas. Did I get him? All right, so you turn it And we go to the bottom of the round, which is our would be assailant. Yes. I would like you to roll a perception check, please. At disadvantage, I assume. No, yeah, actually, because the web will block the sound. Eleven. All right, you don't hear anything. All right, buddy boy, what are you going to do? You're going to. Timmy's do... casting a spell. Okay, do I have that prepared? Hold on a second. I do not have that. Yes, it's his turn. Alright, you here. Ah, crap, where'd you go? From you, I take it? From me. And well, we know we can miss you, Step. Yep. And then... Uh, he can see where he's going. I... Come to my... I'm oh, sorry. Comes back to the top of the round, which is me. Yes. And I say... The web missed us both. You can stop concentrating on it. Okay. And then I, I have, and he has vanished. So I'm still moving quickly. He can teleport. Yeah, I'm going to see if I recognize the spell he used. I do recognize. Oh no, wait a minute. Sorry, that's disadvantage, not advantage. I didn't recognize the spell, which is really stupid because I do it all the bloody time. Smart enough to do anything with that. Oh, that's a natural 20. So, figure out what he did. Alright. I'm going to do this. I cast another second level spell. Alright. And you hear the roar of wind from the other side of the... I would have dropped concentration when you on web when you suggested that. Yeah. So, you've seen me do this many times. I've got the wind going. Ha! Ha ha! I really would like this guy to get away, but it's just not working out. You hear the sound of something tumbling down the stairs, literally banging on the stuff. Okay. Let me do a concentration check now. Oh, maybe turn it invisible. Uh, at least he's going to do that. He's going to take some damage here. Ooh. Oh, that's a lot of damage. Alright. I said, I think I got him. Uh, he's invisible, and and he's blown down the stairs. Yes, move down the stairs. Right. Otherwise, I can't go past you. Yeah, so I, well, I'm proceeding down the stairs. I'm trying to. Yes. All right, I'm gonna do a perception check at this advantage to see if I can move him because he is interacting with the spot. Hmm. No. Nope. All right, so you see me walking down the stairs. I'm doing pretty fast, but I'm trying to like sweep almost. And, uh, I don't know this. My turn? Your turn. I'll cast Sea Invisibility start of my turn. Alright, you do so. Yep. I'm going to head down the stairs. Alright, so you cast Sea Invisibility. Me. Yeah, as an action. Yep. And you move forward 30 feet, which will yep. bring you past the top of the stairs. Actually, you can probably get to my back. Yep. But with your, that movement. And you see, at the bottom of the stairs, prone... Uh, well, the, well, you assume the same robe figure because okay. no one else. I got a point about notice, you. You know, you also notice uh, a rather drowsy and confused person behind the bar. You don't recognize them because uh, we don't not usually up for the night shift. Yeah, trying to figure out what's going on. Why there's wind here? Like, what's going on? <laughs> very, very confused individual. Well, I'm going to ignore whoever that is right. and point out to you. Uh, where he is. Okay. So 
So that's basically all I can do. All right. So we're now at his turn, which is going to require a dex check to avoid being blown back even further or tangled in the chairs. Yep. He gets blown further away, mm-hmm. knocks the chair over, yeah. um, moves the table a little bit, because the wind is quite strong, enough to bl- blow people off their feet. It's also when someone runs into it, uh, enough to knock them over as well. So you can, I can see roughly where he is, but I don't see him. So the only thing I can do mm-hmm. would be, I do have Dispel Magic prepared. Well, I'm not going to go start throwing fireballs at this guy. I do have Dispel Magic prepared. Okay. And I haven't cast any third, uh, third level spells. I'll cast Dispel Magic. And there's no point in trying to counter it because the act of countering it will not do the thing that the spell is targeting anyway. Yes. All of a sudden we see, uh, still prone on the floor, uh, you realize he's visible. You realize he's visible. I assume I do notice the difference. Yes. Right. So now I do see him, and I do move forward to keep him in the cone of the gust of wind. All right. Which is blowing out candles, by the way. And the only light we have currently now is dim light from the fireplace. All right. And uh, we're up to his. Right, your turn. All right. Very little I can do to this guy. That was my one real method of restraining him. Yeah. I'm with Frost Breath again, which isn't going to really have much to... Only one third level spell slot left. And you're in front of me. Hmm. This worked. I just wouldn't work, just based on the fact that there's uh, something else that, that would fulfill our role. Yeah, if you're wondering, I rolled an 18 for my modifiers for your web. And you rolled an 18 with it modifiers. No, Two I wasn't. high numbers in a row. Hmm. Yeah, it's just totally just blown it since then. Yeah. Concentrating on the spell. I am. See invisibility concentration? Nope. Last an hour. Well, I stopped concentrating on my web spell, so. Yeah. Which I can't do again. So. Well, I don't really want to use an experimental scroll in an enclosed space. <laughs> Who do you want to cast the uh, ice storm in the middle of our hotel anyway? Or oh, in? I can't. Uh, I'm going to ready Frostbite aiming at him, and I'm going to say, right, I think it's in, our, in your best interest here if you just surrender and come quietly. So you're readying what? So? Frostbite. And I'm going to guess try to intimidate him with it. Go for it. I roll a five. Well, there's a chance that he'll roll worse than that. Or there's a chance that he won't. <laughs> Alright, so you try to intimidate him. You're readying frostbite. And what's your trigger? If he moves. Or cast a spell. If he does anything other than surrender. Okay, well, he is moving because he's trying to get to his feet. You know what I mean, though. It's like, if... Yeah. Okay. All right. How smart are you? 
Let's see if you can figure this out. No. Well, wow, you're intelligent too. All right. He is in the process of casting a spell. I released my frostbite. Yeah. Constitution saving throw on his part. He fails. Seven points of cold damage. This is adding up. Yeah. <clears throat> Would you like to roll an Arcana check? It'd be a disadvantage. You don't know the spell. Well, thank you for wasting a natural 20. <laughs> 17. You do not recognize the spell. All of a sudden... Hang on. Oh, I may not recognize the spell, I can still counter. Thank you. Which I will do. Thank you. My last third level spell, counter spell. Okay, roll. Let's see. This is a straight roll. Adding five. And that's a total of nine. So that's a fail. You fail. Because actually, regardless if you fail, if you have to roll, you got to at least get. 11, I think, is the minimum for... No, sorry. Uh, 14 is the minimum. What do you mean? This is a ninth level spell? No, no. I mean, uh, you automatically counter any spell third level and down. So the minimum you'd have to roll for is a fourth level spell, which means you would need a 14. Now, regardless, you fail. The entire area is filled with noxious gas. Oh, cloud kill. Well. I rolled to see if he was smart enough to figure it out that a gust of wind is going to disperse this very quickly. Yes, and also I'm immune to poison. <laughs> so. Yeah, there it goes again. You look up. Uh, I am going to be affected you by You just this. froze again. Back to normal. Yeah, we're back to normal now. All right. Uh, like I said, he wasn't smart enough to figure out that the gust of wind would block that. Yeah. And, um, he doesn't know you're immune to poison. So I would like. You, could you look up? I forgot to write down uh, cloud kill particulars. Uh, what is the initial effect? Uh, poison damage. <laughs> yeah, I know. But I, don't know what it is. I forgot to write it down. That's a 20 foot radius sphere of poisonous yellow green fog. Spreads around corners. Yep. Constitution saving throw, taking 5d8 poison damage on a failed save, half as much on a successful one. 5d8? Yes. Is he not in the radius of this spell? Initially, no. Hmm. The gust of wind's gonna blow this all over the place. It is gonna dissipate it rather quickly, but. Yeah. All right, my saving throw is, uh, well, that'll be 23 total. I, oh, wait a minute. I forgot to tell that on screen, so we'll assume it didn't happen. 23. Remember I mentioned to you earlier today that I was going to switch my... Uh, no, I did switch my stone. to fire oh. resistance. Yes, so I don't get plus... 9. I only get... Plus six, 19, which is bonus spells, ABC. We're good. Uh, three less, still enough. You take half damage then. Yep. So that is how many? 5d8, you said? 5d8. That is not pleasant. Oh, seriously? My numbers are six, seven, Oh, sorry, those are sixes. Three sixes, a seven, and an eight. Oh, that's, that's good. Quite high. Uh, 18, 25. That'll be 33 cut in half, which is 16 points of damage. Yep. And I don't take anything. You don't even have to pick up. My <laughs> periap glows a little bit, and I am, it protects me from this. 
So, Cloud Kill does obscure the area for the moment. For the moment. As soon as you're as soon as the wind disperses the cloud, the spell ends. Yeah. Can't get up with bloody feet. Alright. So he's gonna do that. Half movement. Alright. So I'm gonna give him and the confused and alarmed now alarmed person ask the counter yeah. advantage on their saving throws. Yep, that's success. Ooh. Poor person behind the counter. It's not gonna save with that. Oh, but he was in the air effect too? No, when it when it's dispersing, uh, there's still gonna be a bit of an effect. I'm not gonna make it full damage, but it's more than enough to kill a nighttime clerk behind a counter because well, he has minimal hit points, even if this is all one super die. Roll up many. Good thing too. <laughs> oh, good God! I love D8s. Twenty-four. Thirty-one. So that's fifteen. Seven more points of damage to him. Wow! That's your hit point total. Okay. okay. We're standing behind my gust of wind. My gust of wind dissipates this really fast. And I took some damage. I'm coughing. Uh, it spreads it through the room and then it's gone. And as the uh, gust of wind, sorry, as my turn ends, you can see him again. Mm -hmm. And he is at the door crawling, opening the door. Okay. Uh, sure, sure. Now it's my turn. You are completely unaffected by cloud kill. Yes. Uh, I mean, all right. I am going to cast Misty Step, and yep. teleport as close to him as I can with thirty feet a little bit. That spell. You can get to it. Alright. He's got his hand on the knob, fighting the wind, but you're in the wind now, too, by the way. I thought. <laughs> it's a line! <laughs> we... How I... wide is it? I'm sorry. It's five feet wide? Ten feet wide. You're right on the edge of it. So do I have to make a saving throw? I'll give you advantage on it, because it is like right up the literal edge of it. It's still strength saving throw. <laughs> what kind of advantage? You only have to make a 15. Well, I don't have any bonuses on strength. I have a penalty, but the ring cancels out, so that's a five. Just as you materialize, the side of the wind catches you and you spin off into well, a chair. Alright. Well, I guess the only thing I can do then is hit him with frostbite again. You just missed it then. Bonus action. Oh, I keep forgetting. Alright. <laughs> frostbite. Yep. Natural one. Ugh. God. That's a total of 18 points of cold damage. <laughs> if at all possible, I will try not to kill him. You did not state that, unfortunately, before you cast it. <laughs> I literally just stated it now, but whatever. Alright, that's fine. There are clerics in this town. If we kill him, we can get him resurrected. You're trying to make this non-lethal, is what you're trying to say, right? Sure. Because we have done that with spells before. 
Yes. Have we done that in this campaign? We have. In this campaign? Yes. Okay. So you're trying not to kill him. You're yeah, I'm trying to, to knock him unconscious with sheer cold. Uh, you succeed. He is not moving. I say, Jonas, turn off this wind. <laughs> All right, we drop out of combat because. All right, I'm going to roll one thing. Come on, do something proper for a change. <laughs> ah. Okay. You have an unconscious, very cold, shivering individual on the floor. All right. So he's not, his life's not in danger? Uh, I can do a medical check. Yes. Like. All right. I will do so. I have no idea. So, so you got to wake me up at two in the morning. I'm going to take out the rope of climbing. I'm going to have it tie him up. All right. So you can tie him up easily. That's yeah. not a problem. Yeah, I can't. Probably, I probably can't restrain a struggling opponent, but a, an unconscious one—that's easy. Yes. You... So the guy behind the counter is dead. Yeah, I go check. He is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, in that case, I think we should go get Aldrich, or more accurately, you go get Aldrich. I'm going to stay here with this individual and ensure that he doesn't cause any more problems. Alright, so I run off. Yeah. I am going to... They're not really death saves, because he's not dying. Oh, he's unconscious for, because I knocked him unconscious, 1d4 hours. He's unconscious for 4 hours. Yeah, I'm still going to give him a, a chance. Uh, if he rolls really, really well on a constitution check to wake up before that. I doubt it, but... Eh, you know. Basically, it takes a natural 20. <laughs> a one and a four. Yeah. So, long before he even remotely wakes up, yeah. Aldrich and I show up. And actually, Aldrich has uh, in tow a couple of other people. Aldrich looks like he's just getting up. Yes, well, we were also rudely awakened, awoken. Yeah, so this does take a bit of time. Yeah. Uh, close to an hour, probably. But, uh, like I said, we have some credibility in this town. Yeah. And he gets there, and he wakes up. He looks, he's as disheveled as you've ever seen him because he literally got up, threw on his usual stuff, and then got a couple guys to come with him. And then you have tied up, I assume, sitting in a chair or something at this point. Or he's no, like, I just left him on the floor. No, all right. I don't want him to be comfortable. All right, so Aldrich comes over and says, All right, and I've already given him the story. Yeah, so. I'm gonna point to the dead body. <laughs> yeah, he says, All right, this does solve some problems and a small puzzle that I've had. He recognizes the individual. This is the person we've been hunting for. This is a member of the Academy. He's a necromancer. And uh, he's been responsible for a few things. Uh, we were fairly certain that we were closing in on him. We needed, well, basically what we needed was a bit more evidence. Uh, we weren't certain. Mm. Uh, not enough to stand up to a trial. But this is basically all it's going to take. Yeah. Well, I suggest you interrogate him before this because he seems to decide to come after us. Yeah, well, you did interrupt uh, one of his experiments, fortunately. And, uh, yeah. Like I said, I've been very busy. This actually really does help an awful lot, by the way. Mm -hmm. he's, now that he's seen this, he's managed to shake off his uh, lethargy from being woken up at 2 in the morning. And he says, yeah, this is great. I uh, have a great deal of work to do. Signals to his two men. His two men haul him up. He says, I'll get your rope back to you uh, later. We don't. Actually, he's unconscious, right? Yes. Take your rope off. We'll put shackles on him. Okay. And he was going to gag him and ensure that he doesn't. He's dealt with 
magic user before. He knows what yeah. to do. So the guys all trust up and they haul him off. Okay. And that's it. We can go back to sleep. Hey. Uh, you know, they also make arrangements to have the poor counter person dealt with. Yes. I tell you, that did not go anywhere near what I thought it would be. No. And since we're past the oh, two by hour... the way, do you have inspiration? Yes. No, can't give it to you again. Right. Since we're past the two hour mark, now is probably a good time to take our break.